Welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. My name is Mike Brown. Today we're going to talk about airway management within the Rescue Task Force concept. As you can see here, our patient had a couple of amputated limbs that we've treated with tourniquets. We're now going to address the airway. The first thing that we want to do as we look at this chest, we can see a wound here that needs to be dealt with. Mark is going to cover that with a vented chest seal. He wipes away the blood at the opening to the wound and places a vented chest seal across the wound. Looking at this chest seal, you can see that there are vents that will allow air to drain out should it need to. Now that we've restored that integrity to the chest wall, we want to move on to managing this patient's airway so that we can leave him and go treat other victims if we would need to or evacuate him from the area. Mark's going to do that by simply placing a nasal pharyngeal airway into the right nair as he has here. And now we can roll this patient onto his side. And what this is going to allow us to do is let gravity help us out with maintaining his airway. So if our patient would vomit or have any bleeding from their airway, that gravity is simply going to allow all that to roll right out of his mouth and he can maintain a patent airway and hopefully continue to breathe on his own. Can we roll him up to you? Yep. Two, three. While we're up here, we're going to finish this by raking the torso to ensure that we haven't missed any holes on the backside that need to be, uh, that need to be covered just like we did on the chest. So today we have discussed airway management within the Rescue Task Force concept. What we have done is we've applied a chest seal uh, to return the integrity to the chest wall where we had a penetrating injury. Remember, we're going to apply that chest seal anywhere that we have an opening to the body that wasn't there when they woke up from their neck to their navel. So any injury that they have that's penetrating into any of those areas, we're going to cover with a vented chest seal. However, if air then leaks from the injured lung tissue and cannot escape, a tension pneumothorax can form. The vented chest seal is designed to allow air to escape, but it can become blocked with blood or other debris. For this reason, if the patient develops shortness of breath, altered mental status, or other signs of decompensation, a corner of the chest seal should be quickly lifted, then replaced to allow air to escape. Definitive management of this condition will require advanced life support assistance when tactically appropriate. We then applied a nasal pharyngeal airway, and then we rolled the patient onto his side in order to allow gravity to let any vomit or blood roll out of his airway so that it can stay open should we need to leave him to go treat another patient. I'm Mike Brown, this is Mark Latwinko. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.